After a rough patch, the Leafs win two out of three this week, which makes the pain of the loss to Russia at World Juniors slightly easier to bear. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to weep softly in a dark corner. Welcome to the penalty box. Getting the icky out of the way first. The Leafs carry the momentum from a big win in Ottawa to lose 2-1 to one in Boston. Grabowski opens the scoring in the first period where the Leafs outshot the Bruins 11-7. Sweet Deke, grab a goal's 5-hole and the Leafs are up by 1. But you can't keep Boston silent for long and in the second period they got 17 shots on net. 17! And it's Nathan Horton firing a wrister through traffic 8 minutes into the second to put Boston on the scoreboard. Then Savard turns it into a Bruins lead with a shot from the point, his second of the season, and the Bruins are up 2-1. So, down 2-1 after a lackluster period, what happens? Now, if I were to guess, considering how frustrating this season has been, I would say the Leafs would complete the collapse in the final period. But no! The Leafs generating all sorts of offense, 18 shots on Tuukka Rask, and when you get that many shots, one of them is bound to be... Wait, what? This is the part where Tuka Rask stands on his head and continues to haunt my dreams. Including an amazing save on probably Kessel's greatest scoring chance ever against the Bruins. And that's the way it stays. In spite of Reimer stopping 31 out of 33 shots, the Leafs still lose 2-1. to one. And Kessel's scoring woes against his old team continue. But you know what? That's an old story and at this point it's really beating a dead horse. So all I'll say is, tough game. Leafs put forth a good effort, but sometimes that's the way it goes in hockey. But it's just a tough way to lose. I mean, coming off a game in Ottawa where they did everything right, then they do everything right in Boston, strong performance from a rookie goaltender, all those signs point to a win, but no, Boston's a winning team that can do that to you. The good news is this frustration was short-lived, which brings me to... Leafs win 6-5 in a shootout against the St. Louis Blues. And this is the first win at home against the Blues that the Leafs have had since 1998. I don't even know what to say about that. And this was a win that almost wasn't. If it weren't for the performance of Mikhail, he just might be a superhero Grabowski. It's my new nickname for him. But more on Grabo's heroics in a moment. Ten goals in this one, so let's just jump right in. Colby Armstrong opening the scoring 15 seconds in with a Versteeg shot bouncing off of him and in. A few minutes later, former Leaf Alex Steen returns the favor and ties it up in his first game back at the ACC. Halfway through the first, Matt D'Agostini's rebound is hammered in by David Backus, and the Blues go up 2-1. They keep that lead going into the second. Then the Leafs take over. Scoring in the second is opened by, who else, Grabowski, followed by Versteeg, Kessel, Kessel again two minutes into the third, uh, holy Mackinac, they just scored four in a row. So, up 5-2 to two early in the third, game's ours, right? Sorry, person who's obviously never seen a Leafs game before, but... Brad Winchester cross-checks Gustafson, pushing him and the puck into the net to start the comeback bid. Maybe that's karma for the Colton or no call in Florida. Still don't know how you can call that a goal, but hey, it happens. Eric Brewer makes it 5-4 with a blast from the blue line. And Matt D'Agostini ties it up at 5 on a breakaway. OT solves not up, we go to a shootout. Kessel's up first, stopped by Conklin. Alex Dean steps up for the Blues, interesting kind of slow deke, makes it look easy. Blues lead the shootout 1-0. Grabo steps up for the Leafs, and here's where he breaks out the superpowers. Most interesting shootout move I've ever seen, wide turn, spinorama right in front of Ty Conklin, flips it up over the pad and in, and the Leafs tie the shootout at 1. Brad Boys is up next, and of course. No deep, nothing, just a quick wrist or high glove side on Gus, and the Blues take the lead. Next up, Versteeg, and he has to score to keep the Leafs' chances alive. Virtually the same as boys, except he goes five-hole and the Leafs tie it up at two apiece. And the Blues now have a chance to win it with the final shooter. And knowing the Leafs, I fully expected Kole Akavo to step out there, take the shootout, and win just as an extra punch in the nads. But wait, it's Matt D'Agostini. He goes high glove side on Gus too, but Gus stops it, and we go to extra shooters. And as a fourth shooter, it's up to Tyler Bozak. He's only been in one shootout before and didn't score, 
I really thought they'd go to Kuhlman. But Bozak makes a count, beating Conklin high blocker side, and the Blues now need a goal to keep their hopes alive. Patrick Berglund tries to dig out Gustafson, but Gus sticks the pad out, Berglund fails, and I knew the Blues should have used Koleakovo. Now, I'm just as happy as the next man that the Leafs won, but I really thought our days of blowing three goal leads was behind us. Not to mention the flashbacks of the Canada gold medal game that it brought. Come on, man, I've been trying to forget that debacle. In fact, what World Juniors tournament? Never happened. Canada's taking on the US tonight at 7 in the World Juniors semifinals. I gotta catch that. Never happened! Finishing off the week and kicking their road trip off in style, the Leafs completely dismantled the Atlanta Thrashers 9-3. Yes, you heard that right, and yes, I'm positive that the game was from this year and not 1993. Tobias Enstrom strolling in alone opens the scoring for the Thrashers, shooting it through traffic and past James Reimer. Then Eric Bolton and Colton Orr start scrapping, great tilt with Orr scoring the knockdown. And boy did the Leafs get sparked by that. Halfway through the first, Versteeg breaks in on that and boom, ties it up. Then five minutes left in the first, Grabo takes the lead, burying a Phil Kessel rebound. That's his third goal in three games, 11th in his past 14, and he now has more goals than Alexander Ovechkin. Seriously, you can't say enough about this guy. Then in the second, proverbial floodgates. <laughs> Kobe Armstrong. Nikolai Kuhleman. Grabowski again. Kuhleman again. Clark MacArthur. MacArthur again. And all of that was in the second period. The score is now 8-1. to one. And in that span, Thrasher's netminder Andre Pavlik got yanked. Chris Mason went in, got yanked. Andre Pavlik went back in and got scored on just before the second period ended, resulting in Chris Mason going back in to start the third period. You can't make this stuff up. We go to the third and it keeps spiraling out of control for Atlanta with Phil Kessel snapping it past Chris Mason. It's 9-1. to one. And with that avalanche of goals, the Leafs were just 23 seconds off their best time for scoring seven goals. Not to mention them scoring nine times in a row. With just under six minutes left, Patrice Cormier scores, then Andrew Ladd scores, but it doesn't matter. Leafs win by six. Six! Three Leafs had two goal games. Mikhail Grabowski, Clark MacArthur, and Nikolai Kuhlman. And it's easy for a goalie to look good on the right end of a win like this, but Reimer quietly put together another great game, saving 41 of 44 shots. In fact, the Thrashers outshot the Leafs by 10. Really? And Ben Eager really wasn't helping the Thrasher cause. He took a double minor, accounting for one of the Leafs' goals, and then sucker-punched Colby Armstrong in the eye, causing him to miss the rest of the game, and could even miss the game against LA, too. He'll be a game-day decision. Eager's assessed a match penalty, and the Leafs score four goals on that power play. And to add insult to injury, Eager was suspended four games for that incident. Wow, a suspension. Those just don't happen anymore. And one thing I have to comment on. I hate to do this because the Leafs as a unit played so well, but Brett Lebda was a minus three against Atlanta. How does that happen in a 93 game? That means he was not on the ice for a single Leaf goal and was on the ice for all three Atlanta goals. And I don't put as much stock in plus minus as in other stats, but come on, really? And even though the Leafs are on a winning streak, the midway point in the season is here and the trade deadline is fast approaching. Sources say that three names attracting special interest on the trade market are Clark MacArthur, Chris Versteeg, and Tyler Bozak. My question to you, which of those three would you be willing to part with? Personally, I wouldn't want to lose any of them. But if I had to pick one, I'd have to pick Bozak. I think Bozak could just be having a season of adjustment and could bounce back like Luke Shen did after his crummy sophomore season. But you've got MacArthur and Versteeg providing so much offense, it's hard to imagine a deal where we'd get fair return. I mean, you're talking about guys who each have 12 goals and above 30 points in 40 games. Meanwhile, Bozak, even though he's starting to warm up, still has only 7 goals and 16 points. Anyway, who would you choose? And before I go, I want to announce that I've made a new fan page on Facebook. I'll be updating that semi-regularly, so go on there, click the like button, the link to the Facebook page will be down here. Well, at least continue the road trip playing LA, San Jose, and Phoenix. I'll see you guys at the other end of it. Go, Leafs, go!